All right. So we are going to do a little college football question and answer. Uh, we're going to start off with this. Okay. Start, yeah, we're going to start off with it because we, I mean, it's just a bunch of stuff to discuss, but I do want to talk about all of it. If I don't have the answer. No, it's like, okay. Are it's, like right or wrong answers? No, 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 no. These are not, this ain't trivia. <laughs> we, okay. We're not triviaing. Okay. Uh, we are, we're just talking. All right. Uh, because there's, that. there's a lot of stuff that we can, we can bring up. We can talk about. Let's roll. Uh, first one I got down here. So. We listen to well, I listen to podcasts ain't played nobody. Okay. So with Godfrey and uh, and Conley yep. from SB Nation, uh, a question that was asked to them: Who are college football's sleeping giants? So it, it was more a question of: Is Maryland a sleeping giant? And th- so the the first one that comes to mind back beforehand, which is why Saban went there, was LSU. Yep, they had not won anything in a long, long time. The recruiting ground is. Awesome there. That was a sleeping giant. Other than that, like I think Georgia kind of was considered that. How um, are we going back for though? I mean, Georgia's been oh, I mean, they've been good for, for 10, like two years now. But no, but well, even but with it, Mark it, Rick, they yeah, were but a, that's like they 20 were years. top ten, top 15. Before Rick been. got there, they had not been super successful in a while. How long ago was that? Long ago was that? But, no, that so I'm just I'm just talking about those two. Okay. Right? Because Saban Came to LSU in 2000. That's right. That's or 98 or nine, whatever it was, after 99. Um, so going forward, who would you consider to be sleeping giants? I need some type of time window in like 10 years or in like two years. A place that if you get the right coach in there, they could win within like three seasons. That's a tough question, isn't it? So at Maryland, I think could be because they are so close to Baltimore, so close to DC. The talent ground there is awesome, but you've also got to you got to get the boosters on board. And I don't know that football means enough to Maryland, like because that's still really a basketball school, right? Yeah, I wouldn't have suggested Maryland. Uh, like North Carolina, maybe. Like that, this is who it's I've got. It's hard for me to believe that because I'm looking at who they just hired and, and the road they're going down. Well, and it's also a basketball school, I dis- right? Yeah, but that doesn't so, worry me. Well, it, what does it concern me at all? It concerns me because you need everybody on board. But I think people get on board when they realize that that's what's going to make the money. I don't think people – you <sighs> can be excited about both and be all in on football academic or, or, or through the athletic department. Like you can have a football man in your athletic department and still be a really good basketball school. Okay, okay. And and I had UCLA, but I thought the same thing there. Like at so USC, no, I don't like, think there's anything wrong with UCLA being there. They got to be better than what they've been. Well, yeah, but I mean, there as far as sleeping giants, like I think that Chip Kelly, if he actually puts in the work, am I a could fool? turn UCLA into a a top ten team? How all right. How big of a fool am I for thinking maybe Tennessee? I think at this point, I mean, they could be considered a sleeping giant. I like Pruitt. I liked him last year. Now, he didn't do a lot last year, but... But it was his first season, and they kind of had to get... Uh, I, I, I mean, I'm not off that ship yet. I'm not off that no, train. I don't, I don't blame you for, for not being off that ship. I, I, if, I, if I had to pick one team that has potential, if you get that train rolling... Man, we've seen that train roll. Yeah, we we certainly have. But I mean, that was that, like that was before Saban came but, to LSU. I understand, but you you're all, talking twenty years. ago. Yes, but the difference is is they've just run through just a litany of just terrible coaches. Yeah, agreed. Uh, and there, it's and so, been a train wreck of coaches. So they are. We would consider them a sleeping giant because their recruiting ground is um, all the way like it. It goes all the way down to Atlanta, which is not far from Knoxville. Nope. Over to Charlotte, not right. far from Knoxville. Up into Kentucky, over to Memphis and whatnot. Like, there's talent all over them. And it's not, like, right there in Knoxville. If they got but, big enough, and if they got to the level of good, they are now recruiting on a national basis anyway. Yeah, and that's, like they're that's, that's that what they did. They've got the money. That's the other they've side. Got, so that's, got the right. that's point two is... Got to have the money. They've got the boosters that are behind the yep. football program. Yeah, you got to have the money more than you got to have the right coach because you can get the yeah. right coach. No, you got that right. They've got I, history. I'll tell you a school that I 
and this is a hundred percent the coach, and it's Neil Brown. It's West, West Virginia. Virginia. I have I have believed in that man for a long time, and if he is everything that I believed him to be at West Virginia, we could see a different level of West Virginia than we haven't seen ever. Not Rich Rod, not Holgerson. Not Holgerson. I'm I don't know. Rich Rod had him, you know, within a game of the national good, championship. But that was one year. That was one year. Well, Anybody, it, it, I mean, with, with, with that Rod, being said, TCU was really close to winning the national championship. Ole Miss was really close to winning the national championship once. And then they, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, okay. that was that was one season. I'm ta- We're talking about a sleeping giant. We're not talking about a team that might be able to get good catch fire, everything go their way, and win a national title. We're talking about being a giant. I think before Jimbo got there, I think Texas A&M was, like, I think they, they are considered – because they've you never won – You can't call them a sleeping giant now, though, right? Like, they're not sleeping. There's nothing sleepy about them. I mean, they still went 8-4 and four last year. That's like, his first year taking over a new program. I know, but that's what I'm saying. Like, it, it now that they got him, I don't think you can – but they have the, been the reason. Forever. The reason. Okay, so the reason I'm giving them a pass and not being able to be called a giant, but but Pruitt and Tennessee a pass when they both. This coach has won a national title. Yeah, this coach is what we think he is. Pruitt, we watched him coach one season of being a head coach. Yeah, he is still a sleeping giant if he's ever going to be a giant. Jimbo is already a giant. And A&M is yeah. the biggest program in the world. I mean, aside from Texas. They but they're got, both right there. I, okay, we're splitting hairs now. Yeah, because they're they're both huge. And they're both of them have the boosters behind them. Both of them have the recruiting base. So I can't, like, it's hard to call A&M a, a sleeping giant. It really is. What about like uh, like G5 schools that, that could be? Yeah. I mean, okay. Houston. So, yeah. I'm, so I'm in that. Houston, absolutely. I think Dana could do some great things. I think Memphis and UCF can continue to grow. Well, they're both in really talent-rich spots. That's it. And it's so long as you're playing it's a not fun ju- brand. And it's like, not just them either. I've talked about this when I talk about the American and how I think it should be respected better. Every school in the American is in a big city like like city. Yeah, like they're, Cincinnati, they're, they're Houston, not, Memphis. They're not these little dinky college Orlando, towns, okay? Yeah. I mean, it, this is like Tampa. Temple and Philly. Yeah. Like, it's, like, this is not dinky college towns. These are big cities where you can find talent in these big city places. Now, are we ever going to allow them to play with the big boys? Probably not. Probably because, not. Because, let's because let's get know, real. I know how college football works. But – that's why I hesitate to put those guys up there. Yeah. Is there's nothing they can ever do to be considered a giant. I don't know. Like, it, so back to P5, like, I don't know that there's any Pac 12 teams really because the talent base out there is just dwindling away. I could see Oregon getting back to that level just because the amount of money that Nike is willing to put in that brand yeah. still has so much, it still carries so much weight. We're uh, we're gonna talk about Oregon here. Let's go on and move on to that. Okay. Uh, Boise State defensive coordinator Andy Avalos, Avalos, however you say it, leaves his alma mater, Boise, to be the new Oregon DC under Mario Cristobal. Money talks. Is that a good move for him? You think? Yeah, yeah. I think, I think it probably. Is. I think it's a good move for him. Oregon, or if Oregon could ever learn to play defense consistently, I mean, they'd be a force to reckon with. They really would. How many games were they in last year? Where they just needed one stop, man. One yeah. stop. And they couldn't get it. Which is crazy because, like, Levitt, everybody thought the world of Jim Levitt. I don't know what Jim Levitt's going to do now that he's he's not there. I don't know. And especially now that everybody knows, like, he's terrible to work with. Like, yeah, he's got to be a head coach or nothing else. What yeah. he needs to do is take a smaller school head coaching job. That's what he needs well, to do. Well, I mean, do. that's what he did at South Florida, and, right. and he was awesome other than, like, he – I don't know that he started like the the TMZ sports, what you know that kind of world, yeah. but like his kids were complaining that he was abusive because he talked so much trash to him, yeah, and he got fired for it because the the school president didn't like him. Yep. 
And so, which is crazy to me because he had South Florida. But if he went down to a small like, school, like I'm not even talking about like American school, but like I mean, he could go to a Mac school. You talk to those kids, however you want. I think and so. Yeah, I mean, Mac, those are like, like those are like hard nosed Rust Belt kids. They could yeah. they could take that. I mean, you could see Jim Levitt coaching at like Western Michigan. It would yeah you know? wouldn't surprise me a bit. It's, or or it, have him take like over him. whenever uh, whenever Frank Solich leaves Ohio. Which I doubt that he ever does. I'm about to say, you that realize he's he's, he's been like, at he's been at Ohio. You want to build a program? <laughs> Go to uh, Bowling Green. That's that's a place that's in just a, complete shambles. Well, that place will continue to be in shambles, even though they hired a new coach this year. Because mm-hmm. good gracious, they just hired Brian Van Gorder yeah. as their new defensive coordinator. Yeah. That's terrible. Uh, okay, next topic up is Georgia Tech playing one game per season at Mercedes Benz Stadium. A good idea? Why would it not be? Well, it's so. You and I have always talked about wanting the the home game atmosphere, right? Yep. And which is great, but and this will still be like a home game because I mean the stadium is literally ten miles from their campus, if that. How will it not be a home game? Because it's in the Falcon Stadium. I don't. Okay, I don't care about that. How will it not be a home game? I mean, you got to okay. That's that's what I'm saying. I just don't get it. I don't understand it. I, well, so my, I think it is a good idea. I, I think, think it's, it's a fantastic absolutely idea. Because, and I don't think you lose one ounce of the home game atmosphere. Now, people who are used to having their regular tailgate spot, well, they probably won't want to be able to do that because they want to be closer to this stadium than the other stadium. But come on, man. It's one game a year. You pick, look, you make it a, a, a non conference game and you make it somebody who's pretty far away from it. Well, so so the first game of twenty twenty two is against Clemson and they're doing that one there. So that now here's the difference though. Bobby Dodd Stadium holds fifty five thousand people. This one holds, I think, seventy four. Yeah, so you want to do so a game you where you do might the biggest sell ones. it out. Yeah, uh, they're games. doing Notre Dame a couple of now, times. It's a massive game. That's all awesome. so Notre Dame and Clemson so far, but I do wonder if they're going to change up some of their non-conference stuff to where they can get a bigger game. But I think one of them is supposed to be Virginia Tech. And I don't know whether that's going to be good or not. You know, I, I think Virginia Tech is going to be good going forward. I mean, we think. Why would it not be good? But, well, because last year was a disaster. Well, so it makes me they're wonder. They're not good. I mean, yeah, but they've still got a massive fan base. And, like, yeah, if you live no, in Atlanta, how, and you're, how like, big, you're not going to not come. How big is Virginia Tech's fan base, though? Oh, it's still national, Gary. Just because they had a crap year last year doesn't mean that they have a they're they're a national brand. Now they're not Alabama, they're not Ohio State, but I mean they're okay, no different they, than LSU. Like they're a big national brand. I don't know. I think LSU is bigger than they are. Well, I mean, they might be because of recency, but like they're Virginia, yeah, Virginia Tech still. I mean, they, okay. it's a big state right. school. It is a big. It's state still school. a big state school. It's it's definitely bigger than than Virginia. Uh, yeah, yeah, no yeah, doubt. That's, that's much better than Virginia. I'm okay. going to bet that there's an alumni association in every like state in the country from Virginia Tech. I wonder if Virginia Tech has, like, you know how game day did that big thing about all the college bars in, yeah. in New York, like oh, in Brooklyn, there's no Manhattan, question. all that? I, I, there's no question they do, Gary. I do wonder if, I think if you discredit. Have. I think you discredit them. I know a lot of Virginia Tech people that live right here in Memphis. Well, but and they graduated from Virginia Tech, and they came here for jobs. What a uh, uh, who's the guy, that, the quarterback? What's his name? Jim Druckenmiller. Yeah, yeah. he. Yeah. I mean, Virginia Tech came here for a job after his NFL you. career. Yeah, so we got to get him on the show. So I think, just I think, I think you're. Oh, my mic just fell. <laughs> We're gonna have this problem for a while, guys. Yeah, it's it's gonna happen a lot. Uh, yeah, no, I think it's a great idea. I mean, the biggest thing Jeff Collins said it it's it's gonna help with recruiting. Uh, kids want to play there. Their their parents want to go to games there. I, it's a I massive. To, I haven't gone yet. I want to go of a stadium. Why not? And they're willing to give it to you to let you use it. Yeah, use the damn thing. Use it. That's I'm I'm in with it. I like the idea. I'm not afraid of losing a losing a home game. Come on, man. Let's uh let's discuss Scott Frost for a second. Okay. Now, this is another question. What are we going to talk about, Scott Frost? This is a question that was asked, uh, or at least sent to uh, one of the podcasts that we listened to, Solid Verbal, uh, uh, Podcast Ain't Played Nobody, whatever. Is Scott Frost basically a national championship or bust at Nebraska? Like, what is success for him because of the hype? I think that's ridiculous. 
But I don't know who's saying these things. Well, see, that that's the thing. Like, it, it would the fan base be cool with, like, does he have to win a Big Ten championship? Or would they be okay with, because remember, they they fired Frank Solich for and, going 10-2, 9-3. And, and win. win. Like, like, what's my time frame? Like, in two years, win the Big Ten? No, 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 no. Time frame, let's... Three years? Let's, let's give it... Let's give it six, seven years. Yeah, I think in six, seven years he needs to be winning a, a Big Ten title. Okay, so not a national championship, but a Big no, Ten. God no, a Big Ten title no. over Ohio State, Michigan, Penn State, Michigan right. State, That's right. et cetera. One year you should be able to put together a class that can compete with anybody in the country and catch lightning in a bottle, have things bounce your way, and win it. Now you and I talked about the national championship odds for this season. I know. And well, did we do that was, on the show? Yeah. Because that's what that's ridiculous that well that his odds are that, what they are. We're we're gonna talk about this in a little bit, but the 2019 Heisman Trophy, uh, those odds are out. And Adrian Martinez is tied for third. Like with the, the third longest or uh, shortest odds. I like Scott Frost a lot. They're literally these people are making me talk trash about a guy I, I like. Well, he, I think it's he's so coach. much hype. But like why it's... Why are the expectations just so high? You're making it to where he's set up to fail. Yeah. I this agree. is why you don't go home. This is why you never hire your heroes. I've told you this what, before. Would it have We've, mattered, though? The, like, the, it, yes, it absolutely matters. You'd never you, – because now, right now, if he was to have taken another job somewhere else and failed, those people can hate him all they want. Those people can think he's a deadbeat all they want. But Nebraska, he's still a god. This is this is why you don't hire the local young whatever hero. This is why you don't do well, it. Well, but it's, see, all right. So transition to college basketball. Like Memphis hired Penny Hardaway. That's, that's right. worked out okay. Like it, I think they, I think the has expectations it? were has it. Well, yeah, because the expectations were were tempered. Right? They didn't expect them to come next in and year. For if they get the class that we think they're gonna get. This is college basketball. We're one and done. So that means next year they have to compete for a national title. Next year they have to make Elite Eight or that's a failure. Because none of those kids are going to be there the year after. Well, only one of them is going to be a, a one and done. Like Ooh, they, I think, I think that – you think DJ's not going to be? He was a – he's – not even a top forty kid. He okay. ain't gonna be a, a one and done. That DJ kid's... Jeffries will him, not be one and him, done. Let him let him get on a national stage. Well, I will absolutely let him get on a national stage. But I, anyway, so back to this. Yeah, Adrian Martinez tied for third uh, at six to one. But we'll we'll get to those in a little bit. Um, so you think like it, it's not national championship or bust? I do think um, if you're gonna tell me he's got seven years, I think he in in that seven years he needs to be. Constantly competing for one of the teams At least in the, the West in the running for the West to to play for the he needs to play for it a couple of times in one of those seven years he needs to win the damn thing. Okay, okay. I agree with that. Yeah, I could I could totally see that. Uh, speaking of the Big Ten West, Alex Hornibrook transferring this, from Wisconsin. This caught me coldly off guard today. Uh, and and from what I can understand from everything that I have read, because obviously I don't have a whole lot of people that are in tight with Wisconsin. That's right. Uh, Graham Mertz, the four-star kid from Mission, Kansas, that came in has blown everybody, everybody away. Uh, he is likely to be the starter okay. this season from what I have been reading, et cetera, et cetera. And Hornibrook wants to start his senior year, right? This will be his last year, Yeah, right? this will be his last season. He wants to play. I, I don't fight him for that. Where is – I mean, is there a spot – because it, it felt like the transfer portal stuff was was finally slowing down. Is there a spot that you can think of that he would kind of slide in? Where he could start right away? Yeah. he go see my boy Les. Uh, he could go to Kansas. He's not going to go to a big Power 5 school that's competing on a national Man, level. He would be perfect for Les Miles, wouldn't I he? Come on now. That's a good answer. I know. But I never even thought about don't, that. Don't ever, don't ever question less. I mean, that's that's There's exactly what that is. not a day that goes that by that man doesn't go through my mind. Alex Hornibrook. <laughs> Alex Hornibrook. Because uh, yeah, where else is he going to go, really? I mean, this is not – he's not the elite-level quarterback that got beat out by another elite-level quarterback. He's just trying to enjoy his last year of college, play – have some meaningful time that matters and have fun. 
he could be a leader. He would absolutely walk in the door and be a leader there. Yeah. An absolute leader there. I mean, he could help he could help set an example for the what they need classes. to be. That's absolutely right. Yeah, that could be that could be interesting. Huh, okay. And Morning he leads the Kansas. Big Ten. The defenses in the Big Twelve aren't close to what he's playing right now. That's true. He's not gonna get beat up near as bad as he gets beat and, up right and now. And Kansas got a pretty good running game. They're they're working on it. I mean, less is going they're gonna be better than they were last year. I I would a hundred percent agree with that. I uh, I don't know what Kansas's schedule is this year, and I couldn't tell. I, literally, I don't know anybody else. But that's the level of school he's going to. Like, I'm not going to say Rutgers, but like he could go there. But he's going to have to go to a school that's not a great school that's not competing for something. So, so here is Kansas's uh, football schedule for 2019. Okay. They they start out with Indiana State, then Coastal Carolina. They should probably win both of those. Yep. At Boston College. Woo, that'll be a tough one. And then here we go: West Virginia at TCU, Oklahoma. God, uh, they get the they get the brunt of the Big Twelve early, don't they? But then they got a bye week, and then they've Texas. got at Texas, Texas Tech, Kansas State, another bye week at Oklahoma State, at Iowa State, and then Baylor. It gets easier at the end. Well, I mean, is it that much easier going to Jack Trice Stadium in Ames, Iowa? I it's mean, not okay. It's better than going to Oklahoma. It is, but it, it. I mean, I don't know how easy it is, especially coming off, you know, still Oklahoma State, like Oklahoma State, at Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, State, at Iowa State, Kansas and then State, Baylor. Texas Tech under new regime, Baylor. Those are those are better than the first half. Yeah, no, you're right. I mean, I, now I'm I'm I have expectations of West Virginia that might not be real. That's okay. Oh, at I, least for this coming season. I, yes. but, uh, and but, I fully understand that that might not be real. I get that. West Virginia could be really, really good. I mean, they, Austin, they, could, they got Austin Kendall. I, I'm just a – you know how I feel about Neil Brown and how I felt about him for a long time. I want him to get a big Power 5 job. He now has one, and I, I'm just – I'm in. I'm in on that team. Yeah, I could okay. – There was very few schools that he was going to go to that I wasn't going to be like, that's – I'm in. I'm with them. Let's talk about Power 5 teams that do not have a single player at the NFL Combine. Okay. Did did you see this? No, I, I have no list. clue. So, so give right, me the list. Let's start off with this: Arizona. That, that surprised, surprised me. You? Okay. Cal. I didn't. They're me. really young. By the way, they're S&P I was, I was plus just about numbers. To say, they're they're they their whole team's coming back, aren't they? Yeah, the whole team's coming back. But how crazy is this? I've never seen such a gap in the S and P plus. They they are expected to have the number five most efficient defense. And the number one hundred and twenty-five most efficient offense. Oh, so is, it is all. This defense. is why it's hard to hire defensive coaches because they can say, "Oh, you're an athlete. We're going to put you on defense side of the ball." Well, it's it's kind of the same thing with offensive guys too. It's like, okay, like now, it, I don't know about that. Like Gus Malzahn when he was at Auburn. We're going on a tangent here, but we really don't have a lot to talk about. When he was at Auburn as an OC, his biggest criticism of Chiswick was, "You got to give me some talent." Literally, every athlete that walks in the door that in high school plays both sides of the ball, you take. Yeah. And I have nothing. You have to give me something. Well, now that he's the head coach, I think he's divided the talent up pretty evenly between offense and defense. Yeah. But it's probably because he's been on the other side of that getting burned. Yeah. Man. And you don't give, want to get burned give, every time. Give, give your boys some offense. Which, by the way, Auburn has the two fastest players in, in, in the entire country. As far as like running, uh, 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 not forty time, but uh, but hundred meters. Yeah, hundred meter dash. Yeah. Listen, Gus. If Gus has talent, that guy's got some some wheels cranking in his brain that work different than most. I am curious to see what they're going to be like this year with him calling plays again. Like they'll they'll have Bo Nix, high he school will, quarterback. He coming will in. be he will be motivated. I I do agree with that. Which he should be motivated every year. It's sad that you've got to like get on a hot seat to get motivated. But anyway, neither here nor there. Who are we talking about? <laughs> uh, no, all right, so that was Cal. Oh, Cal. Arizona, Cal. Uh, Oregon State, not that surprising, I think. Terrible. Illinois, not surprising. Rucker. Uh, nope. Rucker has, a, has somebody going to the Rutgers combine? Has, uh, they've always got guys going to the combine. Well, they're not going to get drafted. I mean, think about it. How many guys? I mean, there's four Rutgers players on New England. Yeah, but that's just because Bill likes local kids because they're cheap. But yeah, that's, but, that's literally it. But there's, those guys, there's Rutgers are, players on on those guys are going to play special teams. They're going to get their brains knocked out, and they cost him the league minimum, and they get to sleep at home with their mama. Uh, Purdue. 
Oh, that actually shocks me, man. They were good. I guess they're but they, they're really they young, young, really young. PJ, uh, no, that's not Fleck. That's uh, oh, geez. Jeff Brom. Brom, yeah, Brom having young talent. Da- well, see, scared. I was kind of surprised David Blau didn't get any kind of an invite, but at the same time, it doesn't surprise me whatsoever. Uh, yeah, stay in school. But he's a senior. Oh, was he a senior? I yeah. thought he was a junior last year. Oh, he was a senior. Year. Okay, I'm really wrong on that then. That may, maybe I'm wrong. I could have no, sworn you're, he was. You're probably more tuned into this stuff than me, obviously. David Blau, Purdue. Let's see what he is. Yeah, I'd be shocked if he didn't get a workout. I wonder if he just doesn't want to He was a sophomore in 2016. So, so a Yeah, he, sorry, he was a redshirt sophomore in 2016. Uh, so, yeah, he, he was so, a senior this year. All right. Um, all right. So David Blau, like he's, but he didn't make it. Georgia Tech, not a single player. Yeah, they run an option. They run a gimmick offense. That hurts. Well, yeah, but they've always had guys that you know, because mm. Atlanta they ev- guys, they every now and then have guys that well, but stand it's out. Generally, like offensive linemen or something that kind of. I think the league has been burned by taking offensive linemen from option st- oh, because they can't. Right. They get in the league and they can't block. All right. The last one. And these are our Power Five teams that don't have a single player at the NFL Combine. Tennessee. That doesn't shock me at all. As bad as they've been the last four years, there's nobody on that roster coming out. Yeah, but think about think about the fact that they had all of these like top fifteen, top twenty recruiting classes. You're telling me not one of those guys either they didn't stick around. Well, that's it. How many of them or, transferred out? I mean, I, I would imagine it have a to lot. be quite a few. I mean, it's a lot. It's not a little. It's a lot. Yeah, you're probably right about that. No. They didn't miss on all those guys. They just misrepresented them or mishandled them, and those guys are gone. Yeah. Okay. I could see that. I'm going to bet if we went through their recruiting class and see those kids' names, those kids are in the combine. They just went to other schools. That makes sense. That makes sense. Some of them. It, may, it might not be a lot. I bet they missed on a bunch. Bad coaches are not just bad X's and O's coaches. No, they're, they're bad at They're bad at, at everything. everything. So it, it's guys that recruit guys just because they have stars by their name. If if you're if you cut corners at any part of your job, you cut corners at every part of your job. Another another question I had written down here: the most exciting football player you remember from your childhood? You want to go and give you mine? Yep. Mine was David Palmer. So he was the deuce is loose, all that for Alabama in ninety two, ninety three, all that. Uh, he was the all everything guy. He was like five foot eight, weighed like 190 pounds. He was uh, tiny, but man, I was like 10 years old, and this dude was other world stuff. He was returning punts. He was a wide receiver. He played some running back. Like he he lined up at quarterback a couple of times. Like before the Wildcat was like a really you know big thing. Uh, David Palmer was absolutely. Electrifying, he was he was fantastic. He was Rondell Moore before Rondell Moore. That's it. Um, man, I don't know. I don't know that I've ever had just a guy that. I mean, there's been a there's been a lot growing up that I liked. I mean, I. How about this? It doesn't have to be a football at, player. At old at old Miss, Deuce was was big. Yeah, Deuce McAllister when, when I was there. I mean, and, and I was around that program, and not at old Miss at that time, but. Um, you know, there's just been a bunch of guys. That Deuce is the first one that came to my mind. Um, de- all right, so here's one. Defensively, there are two guys that got drafted back-to-back. I thought both of them were going to be the next Reggie White. Now they were the biggest NFL bust in a long time. That was Chad Lavalle and then uh, Glenn Dorsey. Okay. LSU. But those guys, that de- a, the year where Chad was a – was a junior, I think, and Glenn was a sophomore. That that's the scariest defensive front I've ever seen in my life. What year was that? Two thousand four. Two thousand one. I think I think it was like oh. Let's see. When he was he was a freshman. Sorry, he was the top college defensive player of the two thousand seven season. So he might have been a freshman. Oh oh five. He was a sophomore. Okay. Might so yeah, that was that was LSU was number one. They won a national championship. Yeah, we won the year. national championship. Yeah, over uh, Ohio it was State, the Oklahoma. That's right. Okay. Yeah. So that was o- the Oklahoma one. Oh five 
No, that was that was Oklahoma. Oh, that was, was the Ohio State one. That's right. Yeah, uh, that was the Ohio State year. Uh, but that might, was the year that they, they then uh, less told everybody they never lost in regulation. That's right. They went undefeated yeah. in regulation, and they did. He didn't yeah, steal. I mean, they did that. No, they actually. Yeah, they, you're right. They absolutely did that. You're right. No, my I I Glenn Dorsey was my, and then Chad Chad the same thing. Chad was a couple years older than him. I thought those guys were gonna be the second coming to Reggie White. Now both of them got in the NFL, and both of them immediately fell apart. Just injury after injury after injury, and they never played a full season. Yeah. Um. No, no clue what they could have been in potential, but uh, I would I would probably say that. I mean, I, that that's the position I played in 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 high school um, and growing up was defensive line, and and so that was something that I always watched and liked. I would say them. Okay, that makes sense. I know that's a, not a fun. It, you know what? And the other answer, and this is all LSU guys. And I'm promise I'm not trying to be a homer. The Honey Badger was a freak to yeah. watch play football. Yeah, Honey Badger was, uh, was his his freshman year at LSU. He the year that he went for the Heisman Trophy, that kid was un. He, that's the most spectacular football player I've ever watched do anything. For was a that season. was that 2011 when he went for the Heisman? It might have been. I don't remember. I don't remember the years. Yeah, because that season. was yeah he was SEC Defensive Player of the Year in 2000. I know this. The next year he was kicked off the team. Yeah, that was 2012. So it was the 2013 draft that he got yeah, drafted. Yeah, he got drafted. That's right. Yep. And that 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 2011 season, single season, single player, that guy wrecked teams' worlds. Yeah, he was unreal. Everything. Yeah. You could not stop him, and it was a damn shame that he didn't win the Heisman. He really should have won I the Heisman. I agree with that. that he year. was the most electrifying player. Yeah. For sure. That's the most exciting player. And I, like I said, I'm super biased. That was my team. Those, all those guys came from my team, but but uh, I'm sure growing up when I was younger, like I remember watching, but I was a baby watching Bo Jackson. And as I got older, I watched videos of Bo. But I can't say like growing up, I remember seeing him. But I was I was I was a child. Yeah, I mean I was I was not even just a child. I was like six years old. That's yeah, that makes that's sense. Different. Like you don't know what you're watching. You just know as a as a bad man. Yeah. Um. So you know, it's hard to say something like that. I was trying to think of guys that I watched when I was in college or older because I knew more about what I was watching. You know? Right, that makes sense. That makes sense. Uh, last one on the, the Q&A stuff. Uh, the top three possible disappointing teams for 2019. So, And this is a, a list, but I, I want us to come up with somebody else that um, – and we'll just use like – you know, we'll use uh, uh, SB Nation's preseason top twenty-five. We'll just go with that. Can I? Can I say this? If Alabama loses two games, is that like the number one most disappointing team on there? Yeah, probably. I mean, that's that's got to be expectations. What actually happens? Yeah, a two-loss season for Bama is it's got to be. Oh it, yeah, right? absolutely. Uh, Not so that that's gonna happen. Here's but, here's the. But just because their expectations are so high. Here's the ones that, that they are saying. So they've okay. listed these. Um, and I say they. That's I found fine. it on some list online, whatever. Yeah. Uh, but it, it's per ESPN. That's fine. Um, Ohio State, their average preseason rank from all these early <laughs> polls, the FPI has them at number 13. The average rank is number five. That doesn't surprise me. And so I, I with, without Urban being, Meyer, they could yeah. lose a couple of games. And that's the same thing, expectations. If they lose three games, are they is that like, like the most disappointing thing? Yeah. I mean, that's – Because you got to think it's hard to – it's so I know like everybody wants to pick on USC. What are USC's expectations right now? I mean, what do we think they're going to do? I mean, if they win eight games, are we going to be like, ah, that's what I thought? Well, are US, we going to be USC's, like, man, that's disappointing? Let's talk about USC's schedule real quick. I mean, USC in tw- – like, the start out uh, – to start out the season, it is nasty. Like, they have got some really difficult stuff. Uh, They're very fortunate that the Pac-12 is not good at football right now. I, I agree with that. I agree with that a lot. So, Internet's taking fo- – here we go. All right, so they open up with Fresno State. <laughs> they open with Fresno State – uh, the next week, they've got Stanford coming to town. They go to BYU. They host Utah. They play at Washington. 
They play at Notre Dame. That is their first six games. Okay. So I could see them beating Fresno. I could see them beating BYU. Stanford's going to be tough. Utah at Washington and at Notre Dame, that's all tough. Correct. That's the first six. Then they've got Arizona at Colorado, Oregon at Arizona State, at Cal, and then UCLA. So, I mean, I'm like, if they go five and seven, I think you did okay. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, with expectations, it's hard to say disappointing bad teams are going to be bad. Yeah. So, so USC being on this, I'm kind of like, eh, I mean, they're yeah. not even in anybody's top 25. No. So, uh, Texas, their average rank is number eight in okay. these preseason polls. The FPI has them at number 26. So, and, and S&P Plus has got them, what, at 36? I'm going to give you four teams that I think are going to be the biggest. Okay. The biggest disappointments. All right. I think there's a chance that this could be one of those seasons where just so much coaching turmoil, turnover. Alabama's got dudes for days, but things seem to bounce their way all the time. At some point in time, it might stop. They lose two games. That's a massive letdown. Okay. okay. Let's say that doesn't happen. I'm going to give you Ohio State. I think that Ohio State loses three, four games this year. I think Texas loses a few more games than people think. I know our Texas people already hate me and send me death threats. That's fine. And and the other team, we've talked about them already, strictly because of expectations. Nebraska. Nebraska is going to be the most disappointing team. Yeah, probably. Because yeah. for some unknown reason, people think they can win the national championship this year. What a – And if they go six and six or eight and whatever, four, what the hell does that mean? Uh, nothing, I don't think. It damn sure ain't national championship worthy. No. Uh, do you think that Texas A and M? All right, at first because of their schedule. That, that, that was, hang on, I don't think that's disappointing. They play the most brutal. I thought they could have dark horse chance to win a national title, and then I looked at their schedule and I thought nobody's running that gauntlet. This is not doing it. So, so here's you're still college kids. Here's what they've got. Now I, we'll go ahead and go through them. Uh, they got Texas State to, to open up with. That's fine. At Clemson. Oh, God damn. <laughs> <laughs> Lamar, uh, so that I mean they'd be two and one. Uh, then they host Auburn, which they have not beaten Auburn at home ever. Yep. So last year was the first year that one of those teams actually won a home game, and that was Auburn that won. Uh, Arkansas at AT and T Stadium, uh, which would probably be a win. They'll murder Arkansas. They host Alabama, play at Ole Miss. Best host- thing they got is they get to host Alabama. Yeah, they got a chance to beat them because they get to play them at home. They've got at Ole Miss, then Mississippi State comes to Kyle Field, uh, UT San Antonio, and then South Carolina comes to Kyle Field, and then at Georgia, Georgia. and at LSU. LSU. Those, those two back-to-back, Clemson, and then you've got Alabama thrown in there, and Auburn. I, I'm not, they're not gonna, I'm not going to say they're going to lose all those games because I don't think they'll lose all those games. I think a and going to be good. That's, that's an unbelievably hard schedule. Yeah, that's I mean at Georgia, at LSU, at Clemson. If they and then you finish, host Alabama. If they finish eight and four, I will not say that's a that's a terrible season. I, as, I mean, as I'm long looking. as as long as their four losses are one of those five teams. Um we've got or six right, so teams so call. here here's the top fifteen. They've got uh Alabama number one, Clemson two. This is uh the sporting news top twenty five. Okay. Uh Georgia number three, Oklahoma four, which now, that could be – all right, we could flip-flop and you could take Texas out of that. Oklahoma could easily be that disappointing thing. If yeah. Jalen if, – if for some reason the god of football quarterbacks is not that and can't fix Jalen and, and they have a letdown, they could lose four games, five games. I think the Big 12 is better than it usually is. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree I, with you. I, I crap on the Big 12 a lot. Well, they gave us reason to for a, for a long time. But, I, but the teams I like are – Teams that have been bad and are getting bad. Iowa State. Baylor I like with Matt Baylor. Rule. I just love Texas Matt Tech. Like I, I think Matt I have Wells no, is going to be I have good. no expectations of Texas Tech. Let's see, that's where we differ. I, I'm in the tank for, for West Virginia like I am with Baylor now, for Matt Rule and, and, and with Neil Brown. I think they could be better, but these are all the, the B and C list teams. And then I always, always, I'm never going to doubt out. Gary Patterson. I have no idea what the hell happened last year. <laughs> Either Gary has just lost it and he's done. He doesn't carry his cash and checks. Or 
they are going to be way better this year because he's. Well, they, I mean, off. they didn't have a quarterback last year. Yeah, but you can't. It's bad. Like, you you got to figure something else out. Yeah, I agree. I mean, that's that's what was so crazy is TCU had the most on paper the most talented team they've ever had, but and you, you can't let not having a quarterback kill you that bad. I agree. Uh, number five was Ohio State. Six Texas. Seven LSU. Eight Notre Dame. Uh, which this seems like it could be a prime spot for Notre Dame to to have bounce a letdown. Yeah, I mean they they they've got it. Notre Dame's got a pretty tough schedule. I mean they got a tough schedule every year. So. That's that, uh, yeah. And then uh, what is it? I mean, if they lose two of those games, I don't think it's a failure because going undefeated last year was just crazy. Like they just I mean, you just don't do it a lot. It doesn't happen very often. True, but is is it a letdown for them if if they do that? If they lose two games, it's disappointing, but it's not Alabama losing two games disappointing. They play at Louisville to uh, to kick off well, the uh, the job, season, yeah. uh, and that is on Labor Day evening. So that's a Monday night. Then they're off the next week. They got New Mexico at Georgia. They host Virginia, who is on the up and up. That's right. Bowling Probably Green. Uh, they host USC. They play at Michigan. Virginia Tech comes to town at Duke. Navy, Boston College at Stanford. I mean, you know, they, they could easily walk. lose two or three games. That's right. Uh, but I Florida, think I have the expectation that they'll lose two or three games. Yeah, well, maybe not three. I think the I think if they lose, if they finish the season ten, ten and, two. and two, I think that's a good season for Notre Dame. I agree with that. I agree. Uh, number nine, Florida. Ten, Michigan. Uh, Eleven, Texas A and M. Like I think Michigan. If Michigan loses to Ohio State again, this is then the, it's a like that's it, right? Like this is this is it. Part of my Ohio State being a disappointment is that this is the year that they lose a couple of games and then they get they find Harbaugh finally gets his comeuppance. Uh, number eleven Texas A and M, twelve Penn State, thirteen Oregon, fourteen Washington, fifteen Mississippi State. Now I don't understand the, the Mississippi State thing on here. I mean they they lose basically everybody off the defensive line. Uh, they lose Nick Fitzgerald, who, which might be better for Joe Moorhead's offense, but, whew, I mean, that's that's crazy stuff. He was a really good quarterback and a really good leader for that team. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and shame on Moorhead for the way he used him. And the yeah. way he contributed to, like, hurting the legacy of Fitzgerald. There. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I mean he could eight and five last yeah. year? He could have left there not being Dak, obviously, and not going and playing in the league, but he could have left there a Mississippi State hero. And Moorhead just mismanaged him as bad as badly as you could do that. You uh, you got that right. All right, uh, so we'll, we'll. So I had a Mississippi State guy talk to me about, well, we're bringing back our whole secondary, and I said, and being an LSU fan, I'm so glad all those players are coming back because <laughs> <laughs> we don't we didn't throw on anybody, but we threw on your butt. Oh yeah, well, that's, I hope all State's, those kids are all back. State secondary was not great. What made them? Better against passes is, was is the quarterback had two seconds to throw the exactly. ball. And he got eaten. It's sweat and, uh, uh, and Jeffrey they could Simmons. get to him with four. Yeah, if they could get to you with four. They didn't have to blitz anybody. Exactly. So you drop seven I'm, back in coverage, I'm, I'm and it's a lot you, easier. I'm really glad they're bringing all those guys back. It's, I'm <laughs> I'm with you, and they may end up being really <laughs> no, good. No, they could be like, good. And I, I, I not I joke. It was, I mean, I'm obviously taking a shot at him and, and messing with him, but it's just one of those things where there's a. They don't scare me. They, uh, that's the perfect way to put that. They don't scare me. Perfect way to put that. Uh, as always, shows brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They got six wonderful sports books. You can find more information on them over at tunicatravel.com. We will be at the horse, not the horseshoe, uh, uh, horseshoes doing the. Sam Sound. Uh, sorry, horseshoes doing something completely different. Like, you got to pay to go there. That's okay. That's fine. That's okay. But you can come to you us come for, see free. for free. At Samstown, March 21st, March 22nd, 10 a.m. both days. We will be broadcasting live for the NCAA tournament. We're going to broadcast at 10 a.m., then we're going to broadcast before the afternoon slate. We don't really know a time yet. We'll figure that out. Yeah, we'll figure that out whenever they actually announce the time. Two shows each day. Come hang out. It's going to be a good time. We're going to be there all day. We're actually staying the night on Thursday night down in Tunica. So, you got no excuses. Come out at any point during the day. Come and hang out with us. Try and get up for the uh, the 10 o'clock. Take off work. Take off work. Come you know you're day. skipping work anyway to watch basketball. Exactly. Uh, and we'll, you know what? We'll go on and talk college basketball uh, on the next thing. There you go. 
Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.